hello guys welcome to my channel it's your girl from life of Abimi once again and welcome to another episode of the law in practice okay this particular um program this particular platform that is law in practice is meant for lawyers you know, we want to learn one or two things about law practice in nigeria especially new weeks okay that means new lawyers in nigeria so let's dive right into the business of the day the business of the day we are going to be, i'm going to be taking you through the step by step process of commencing an action till the end of the action in court okay okay so we're going to be dividing this particular episode into two part a and b part a will be on civil litigation while part b will be on criminal litigation okay so this particular video is part a we are going to be discussing how step by step how to commence you know a civil action in court you know the steps the stages of commencement till the end you know of a civil action in court in Nigeria, we are going to be using the um the high court, you know, as our case study. Okay, every civil action in court, definitely a client approached you in the office, you know, to help them with one or two issues. Okay, so the first thing to consider in this video is client interview. Okay, that is the first stage of every civil action client interview the clients will approach you in the office you know we have, we have to conduct a client interview you know to to get information which we you will use in the course of preparation of the processes you are going to file in court for the client okay so the first thing is client interview and what do you need to look out for in a client interview the first thing is you have to be you know professional make everything professional you know when a client approach you this is why at all time you have to be prepared you know you have to be well read you know you have to study well you know in all aspects of law so that you won't be you know you, the client will not come to you and start telling you their story and at the end of the day after saying everything you don't have anything to say you know it's actually demeaning you know of a lawyer not to have something to say about something especially when it, when it's related to legal issue you know so the first thing is when a client approach you in the office you know Try to know the aspects of law that their issue talks about, okay, that their issue is about. For example, a client that comes with land matter, by the time he starts telling you the story, you will discover that, okay, this is a land matter, okay, and you know the laws applicable to land issues, you know, and you know the limitation period and other stuff, okay. So during the client interview, study carefully. As your client is telling you the story, try to take, you know, your jota or whatever you write in. Try to write in points, you know, from what the client is saying. Or sometimes I record it, okay, just record whatever he has to say because you can actually, while writing, if you can't get everything, you can't get everything because you still want to go along with whatever the client is saying. So what you can do is maybe record, you know, record whatever the client is saying. Or if you like, if you don't want to record, you can actually write serious points down, the point that you will need later that will guide you on to the legal, you know, the legal steps you are going to take on behalf of the client, okay? So the first thing is client that view and make sure you are very professional about it, okay? M meaning you have to get grasp the major points and try to deduce the legal issues that arose from whatever information the client is giving you. After the client leave your office, okay? The next thing for you to do is to sit down and look at the legal issues to raised, you know, in your, um, in the information given supplied by by your client okay sometimes you may want to wait you may want to wait till maybe the next day before you actually you know tell the clients the court of action the kind of um, actions you're going to take on their behalf because you have to consider so many things okay maybe you don't know the limited the limited time you know within which the action can be started bad maybe you don't know this maybe you don't know that so you can still take your time to like okay please come tomorrow by the time you come tomorrow we already have all informations for you you know as to what and what we are going to do to help you but then if you are very vast in that particular area and you already know what and what to do you know you don't need to start taking book in, in the presence of your clients that's like okay let me to take this law, go and take the law, laws that are, that are applicable to, particular, to the particular situation, come and go and take this, go and take that, it's not professional, okay, so you can actually, you know, professionally tell your client that, okay, yes, we already have your information, and we are going to get back to you, you understand, meanwhile, we are not going to be talking about billing, you know, as in your professional fee, that's your, your brief today, we are not talking about the brief, okay, at this stage, what we are talking about is how to commence, you know, and commence a civil action till you get to the end of the civil action that's already so we are going to be going to strictly to client interview and billing that's in one or another video 
okay so now after get going through what information the your client has given you and it's that okay these are the legal issues raised okay try to get the laws that are applicable to them okay after that after getting the laws applicable to them the next thing is to prepare your processes okay what are the processes you are going to prefer in a to prepare in a civil action it depends on the type of action that it brought before you you know if it's land matter when well, we have the rules of court okay to guide you on that the groups of court provide uh, the process the comments means of commencing each you know issues you know in court you know if it's land issue we have the writ of someone okay if it's will and other stuff someone we have originating someone we have originating motion depending on the particular information you have okay that is what will determine the kind of originating process to you know initiate for your client so the first thing is get your rules of court to know the kind of initiating um really yes the process to initiate on behalf of your clients so when you know the kind of process you want to initiate for your clients then you start preparing your brief okay start preparing your brief and now in court what we do what is applicable is that you front load Concluding me that all documents that you are going to be using, you know, as exhibits, you know, as or the written statements on hold of the um, witnesses you are going to be using for the matter, all are going to be concluded. Meaning, you are going to file all of them alongside your writ of someone, alongside the process you are you are you know filing. That writ of someone is going to be is going to be issued by the registry of the court. You know. The first thing you are going to front load with your, your risk of someone is your statement of claim. Okay, statement of claim is a statement, you know, it's actually the breakdown of the information you have. Okay, the breakdown of the information you have from your client is your statement of claim. Okay, that is where you have to tell, tell the story the way it is, how this, how that, you know, in trying to protect your client's interest while doing that. Okay, so don't go and put some things that will actually work against your case. Okay, so the first thing is the statement of claim not preparing your statement of claim very well if the risk of someone comes first the statement of claim of claim then your witness statement on hold meaning the witnesses you are willing you are you are prepared to call to come and testify in your favor in court during the you know um the trial okay so those witnesses they are going to actually prepare their written statements you know which we are going to go and swear to in the court as an oath which will be attached as part of the document to be front loaded with your root of someone okay so you have your root of someone you attach your statement of claim your your um, written statement on oath of each you know witness you want to call a trial then you have the list of um documents you are attaching you are going to make the list of all the documents you want to attach, you know, and you are going to also attach all those documents. You have to front load all exhibits, you know, that you are going to be using in that, for that matter, okay? After preparing your process, the complete process, that's the result of someone with all these things I just mentioned. After having all these things prepared, then you go to the court to file, okay? It will be for them to now dispatch it to the bailiff section where your process will be served on the other party, you know? At this stage, you just make sure, just make sure you work with the belief section to make sure that your survey, your process was actually served on the other, other party. Because without that, your your what you find will just the amount of nothing will just be there. You understand? So that's why I said in my last video that you should work with the officers of the court. It's very important. So work with the belief at this session to make sure that your process is actually served on the other party. Okay, that is you are the claimant. You are the one filing it. You are the claimant okay, in the high court, and the other party is the defendant. You can have like several defendants we can have like several claimants first claimant second claimant you know and then you can have you know um, defendants like three different people that you're actually bringing issue against but the same issue okay so you list them the first defendant second defendant all this will be in the process you know before you file okay and all these defendants must be served all of them must be served before your suits can actually start before trial can start at all before the courts can actually before they can actually um assign your case to a court you know that should be saved on other um other parties to the matter if you are, you are not able to save you know even when your case is assigned to a court you know after some a while and it is the time has normal time has passed and your case was actually is actually um assigned to a court but unfortunately when they call your case you are, the, the first thing the court will ask you as the other parties been said that's the first thing the court will ask you if you're not able to provide a, a positive answer to this then it's like back to square one you still have to go and set them you have to go you know all these things so why not just take your time to make sure that all these things have been done before your case is actually assigned to a court
first time your case is coming up before the court it is going to come up for mention okay it's just going to be mentioned in court and you will announce your appearance the other six lawyer will announce their appearance you tell the court what the matter is about and that this is that you are ready to you know to go on with this matter you know you just introduce the matter to the court that's what mention is about you are the claimants you know you, you are the one that filed the matter you know, they can actually be on the other side so if you are on the other side you just wait for the claimant to introduce why they are in court you know and this is what this is what they have filed and other stuff and the respondent will, may not have anything to say or may have something to to say at this point you are just mentioning it nothing is being recorded on your matter okay so at this stage after mentioning your matter okay the next thing to do is to file a pretrial form okay a pretrial conference form there's something we call pretrial conference okay in this pretrial conference in the court the court allows you to actually try to set some points you know some issues from your statement of claim there's some point that okay maybe there, there's some issues that can actually be trashed okay maybe not the major issue but then some some can actually be agreed between the parties can be decided between the parties even before trial so all these things that can be done if without going to trial will be sorted at the stage of pre-trial conference okay be sorted at that stage but then if you choose not to go for any pre-trial that you're going to try the court will allow you you know and then you have to you know ask the court to to list your case for hearing that you are you're opting out of you know of pre-trial conference but two the two counsel must actually agree that they are not going to that stage of pre-trial conference but then if you agree to go to the stage of which is the normal stage now the next stage now is that for you guys to go and file your individual pre-trial conference form and uh, it's actually usually it's part of what we have we also have the forms we have in the civil procedure rules of the state too so the, all these things the forms are actually the civil procedure rule to guide you on how to go about it so after filing your your pre-trial conference the other party filed their pre-trial conference uh, form and then you your matter will be you know uh, will be given a date a definite date you know for pre-trial conference so when the date comes for pre-trial conference both of you say appear in court to look at whatever you guys have you know have written in your pre-trial conference are there some issues that you guys agreed to to settle at that stage or, or are you guys saying no there's nothing you want to settle at that stage okay if you say there's nothing to settle at that stage the court will just give you a definite state um, date you know for hearing of your of your matter okay but then if you say there are some matters to be settled on pre-trial then pre-trial conference starts Okay, pre-trial conference starts and two, two, the two councils, which you know, just starts with all the things you are ready to settle. Starts talking about them. You start start looking at how to go about, you know, setting setting those things. Even if it's the old, you know, issue, the major issue that brought you to court, you know, you can actually settle it without it getting to trial. At the stage of pre-trial conference, you can actually complete your case. Okay, but then if it's just few as some parts of the you know issues that brought you to court that was able to be settled the other ones that are not settled you go straight to trial why don't that be settled it will just be settled and the court will record it as you know judgment of whatever you guys agreed on will now be recorded as judgment of court in respect of that those particular issues when all of this has been settled then you are now before the court for the trial what are the things you are expecting the first thing is you are the claimant and you are going to be opening your case first okay as a claimant that you are opening your case for us, what is the meaning of opening your case? What you just do is tell the court that, my lord, this is um this case is about this. We have filed this on this so, so day, and we are calling social so, so witnesses in our to actually buttress our case. For this case, we are calling like we are calling three witnesses in this case, and they are all in court. Maybe they are in court on the first day. It's possible, okay. But if they are not in court, it's just one of them that is in court. And we have one of our, of our witnesses in court, and subject to the convenience of my of the court, we are ready to go on with that matter. So the court, we if the, if it's convenient for the court, the court can actually ask you to call your first witness into the witness box, and then it starts, you know, um, examination in chief. Examination in chief is done by you, you know, that call the witness this is where you ask them their name you know let them introduce themselves to the court and then tell their story you don't, they don't need to tell the story again because this is a high court a court of record okay and we already have their written statement on hold filed in court so what you just need them to do is to adopt their written statement on hold how do you do that you ask them their name their address what they do for a living and after they have told the court that and it's recorded make sure everything your client is saying is actually recorded by the court okay so when you get them get their information their detail, personal details recorded by the court then the next thing is to ask them if they file 
a written statement on hold at the registry of the court. You know, you're very, as you said earlier, that you must have filed that written statement on hold, front loaded with your written, um, with your writ of someone. Okay, so you have to confirm it. They have to come and confirm because they are the ones that will come and adopt their written statement in court. Okay, so you have to let them confirm it to the court and let the court record it that they actually prepare that written statement themselves and. Uh, as in, gave the information that you used to prepare it, and they signed it themselves, and they actually swore to the oath in court themselves, okay? So they have to adopt that. So we will first thing is to ask them, did you sign, did you prepare this, did you sign this um, statement, which is now on notes, in the registry of this court on so-so day, okay? Which they will say yes to. And if they say yes, and you ask them, what do you want to do with this written statement on notes? Okay, you can say it that way, and you can say them, do you adopt? You can actually help them to say, do you adopt your written statement on those as your testimony in this um, suit? And if they say yes, it's okay. After your witness has given his evidence in chief, as conducted by you, meaning he has adopted his written statement on hold, already filed in court, and he has adopted it in court, then you are done with that witness. Your witness, you are done with the witness as at them. You inform the court that that will be all for the witness. The court will ask the lawyer on the other side if they want to cross examine your witness, and which most of the time they will say yes, and they start cross examining your witness. What is cross examination? That is the heart of the other party trying to destroy the case you already built, try to build during your evidence in chief. Okay, your evidence in chief is to build up your case before the court. Let the court be convinced, you know, that this is what this thing that you are coming to court for actually happened, okay? The other party is there to actually puncture your case. So the time for him to, like, the opportunity for him to puncture your case comes up during court examination. Although they have done it in their assessment of defense, but then they have not come physically to convince the court by shaking your, your witness, okay? By trying to destroy whatever your witness has said in his written statement before the court. So that's court examination. It's a very crucial part of every trial, okay? So at this stage, your, your witness will be cross-examined by the other party and when he is done, the court will ask you if you have any re-examination. Re-examination is the part, when, after he is done with this cross-examination, the court will ask you if you want to re-examine. It's any ambiguity that has been created during cross-examination, you can you now have the opportunity to actually try to, 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 to correct the ambiguity, okay? But if there's no ambiguity, if everything we asked was just like the normal things and all, yeah, there's no need to stand up and be saying, yes, we want to re-examine. But if there's a great uh, ambiguity that has been created in the course of the court examination, which will affect your case, then it is better for you to stand up and re-examine your client again. But most of the time, you will not even be, need to re-examine re you know, the if there is no amb ambiguity created in the course of the court examination. So as the claimant's counsel, you have to call all your witnesses. If you have five witnesses, you call them one after the other as they present themselves in court, okay? Maybe, for example, if you call one witness today and the other party is, the other witness is not available because you have to tell the court, my lord, I'm very sorry, our second witness is not in court today. Um, do, do it due to so, 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 and so reason, okay? Because it's actually a disrespect to the court for a witness not to be in court, you know, when the matter is coming up. So you have to tell the court the reason why your client is not, um, your witness is not in court and all, and then plead with the court for, you know, for an adjournment for you to be able to bring your other witnesses if the court permits you the other party will be a, a, allowed to actually react to that okay sometimes they'll be acting for for cost and other stops but then when the court not granted that ordinarily the court will grant you the adjournment so when the adjournment is granted then you for the day you are you are done for the day but then the next adjourn date your witness you continue from from where you stopped okay you start calling your re, remaining witnesses okay you start with the net with the ones that are available you actually call them to and the same process we actually we done to all of them that is exam in chief and then for examination re-examination and then the witness is actually discharged so after all these things when you are done with all your witnesses you have to politely tell the court that my lord these are all our witnesses and this is the case of the you know claimant let the court know that this is the end of your case and that is all for you. Then the defense will ask to actually open their own case, which means they'll start calling their witnesses. If they are ready for that day, yes, they start calling their witnesses by calling the first person into the box. And the same thing with procedure that went for your witnesses will actually be done with this. They will be the one to examine their own um, witness in chief while you cross examine, okay? Doing the same thing, trying to puncture, you know, their defense, you know, with their you know their witness okay so that is the process of trial 
that's the trial process in civil matters okay after the defense have concluded the um, examination of their their witnesses okay the cross examination the re-examination re and all if all those will be concluded they will tell the court that okay this is the case of the defense you know to and got to get all those things noted when you the defense close their case that is the end of the case the only thing left is filing of the final written address okay each party will have time to file the final written address the rule of court will provide the time limit within which the claimants and the defendants file the final written address and when to file and who to file first okay please be very 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 accustomed be very you know abreast of all this provision in the rules of court okay we know who files first and then who file then the other party that file after will have time to read you know to reply to whatever the other party has filed please use your rule of court you know i don't want to be specific about that you know because we have different court and different rules okay so please go go through your rules of course when you are looking at this and because there is a time limit within which you have to file the final written address and within which the other party has to you know, actually you know respond to it okay so after filing your written address you will come to court to adopt same okay adoption of final written address is just for you to call whatever you have final written address must contain your argument from the beginning with all the evidence adduced during trial you know the argument from the beginning of the trial till the end you know you have to make sure that this is where you now bring in your cases you know cases on point you know your arguments are trying to convince the court that what you have brought before the court is the right thing okay while the other parties will be doing the same thing so in this final written address make sure it's actually very it's actually it touch the cogent you know points that you raised during trial and then that all the evidences you are used are actually you know it's like you are trying to guide try to re remind you know refresh the memory of the court of what actually transpired from the beginning of the trial till the end okay so that is why your final written address should be well prepared you know take your time get a lot of laws a lot of status to back up your you know your your final written address other filing is the next thing is to, for you to adopt both parties to actually adopt you will adopt it on the same day if time permits and if you guys are really all both of you are ready so when you adopt you just adopt it by telling the court that okay this is our we have filed our final history address dated this so, so day you know and then this is our case that you just a summary of you know whatever you have already, already prepared and filed as a final history address and now telling the court that we want the court to do this for us you know to help us get this in because this you know that is a final written address let the court know what you have done in the trial and that you want the court to actually decide the matter in your favor that's what your final written address is about and after like after listening to the adoption of your final written address the court adjourned the matter for judgment okay the date for judgment the court will tell you that okay this final this matter is adjourned for judgment on so so so, so date and that is the end of your civil matter you are waiting for judgment okay that is the end of your matter that is not like the end end because if the matter you filed at the end of the day you lose the matter okay maybe the matter was actually not in your favor then you have a right of appeal you are going to be doing another video on appeal you know but for this is commencement and to the end of a trial okay till judgment okay that is what we have done in this video i am very sure you must have learned one or two things in fact this is the whole you know process which you have to go through during your civil trial in nigerian courts thank you very much for watching this video and if you have find this video very helpful please help me subscribe to my channel and please turn on the notification button so that you can be notified wherever whenever i post another video thank you very much please like and comment on this video you know i love you guys so much and please watch out for part b of this video because it's going to be on criminal you know trial in the high court thank you very much bye, -bye.